Hey, welcome back everybody. Music with Todd Ledbetter and I'm so glad you're here to join us with some more David Bowie. Uh, the song is called Stay. Um, and I think I've heard this song before. I when I, I just kind of clicked the beginning of the song just to make sure my headphones were working and I recognize that lick. Okay, so I've heard this song before. I can't really remember how the whole thing goes. Um, but this is a live version from 1976. Um, there's an album, Live NASA, NASA Coliseum, 1976. Now, this was requested, recommended on the channel by one of you. And um, it was a few weeks ago. But I saved it, of course, so I can uh, check it out because you guys re recommended it. And I want to hear it. So it's got a few songs on this live album that I've heard. Station to Station, Suffragette City, Fame. Not sure what World on a Wing is, but I've heard this Stay song before. Ba -da 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 -da. I've heard that lick. Uh, Waiting for the Man, not sure. Queen Bitch, I think I actually did that song on the channel. So there's Life on Mars, Five Years, Panic in Detroit, I've heard. I like that song. Uh, Changes, TVC15, not sure what that is. Diamond Dogs, Rebel Rebel, and... Uh, the Gene Genie. So packed uh, album, live album, full of full of uh, very, very, very popular David Bowie songs. <clears throat> so looking forward to that. So I don't think there's a live uh, footage of it. it. I don't think it's just it's just from the live album. So let me uh, go ahead and give you this. Boom. Well, not quite that. Let's fix that a little bit. Give you the whole thing. There you are. So let's check out uh, 1976 live remastered version of Stay from David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, I've heard this before. It's lit. Say you stay this time. 
awesome i gotta say that uh the bass player and the drummer were kicking ass in that song really really freaking awesome and i've said it before it's like he, david bowie's music is so funky sometimes it's so funky and that's just like it's just like so funky i 
was thinking it's like okay 1976 i was bicentennial so i was like seventh grade i guess uh, and i don't remember my parents ever taking me to a concert of like somebody famous i can't think of any anything you know we we traveled across country uh, one time when I was around 10 and we went to Nashville and we went to the Grand Ole Opera and uh, uh, Grand Ole Opry. I don't remember who I saw. I might have, you know, like Minnie Pearl or somebody like that. I don't know. Can't remember. But uh, and I, so I'd never really been a concert goer. But, you know, 12, 13 years old. Um, I was just getting into rock music okay I was it was just I was just getting there I think I had some Beatles albums that my aunt gave me and then I bought Aerosmith Rocks was kind of like the first rock album that I ever bought and then I got into Kansas and Sticks right then so it's like this stuff you know was was uh, really not on my radar. Although, like in '76, I, I in early like radio songs of David Bowie's, of course, I've heard. But as far as me claiming to be like an album guy, I never really listened to his albums um, that much. And so, just thinking about how awesome that would have been to be able to see him in 1976 and be kind of like in a position to enjoy it like like if i'd already been exposed to him and i i liked him so i was excited to see him or if i was a little older and i could go see him and enjoy him uh obviously i probably would have recognized a few songs at that point in 76 off of his off this album because there were so many good songs um but dang i wish i could have been there I know fame was probably the most um, recognizable song for me in those days out of all these songs, maybe Suffragette City, maybe. Uh, I think I came a little more familiar with that just a little bit later, more like around um, 78 and 79. I remember I was in a band and I wasn't old enough to drive yet and we would play Suffragette City and then I so I was like 15 and then I turned 16 and I had a car and I can take my my equipment up to the band rehearsal so I know it's I heard those songs can't I don't know when Suffragette City was originally recorded I don't remember but man it's just I I would have liked to have seen him live in concert and and just in all his glory like that whole like two and a half three minutes at the end of the song was just was just jamming the, the guitar player was just playing all the licks he was just playing all the licks and what was david doing during that during that part you know i just can imagine him just participating with the band participating with the audience i can't imagine him leaving stage unless he unless he was going to leave stage for a costume change or something during that and then come back out and uh, play uh, Waiting for the Man or something. And then go into Queen Bitch. Don't know. Do not know. So if you were there in 1976 and, and you saw this concert, let me know what was going on during that last three minutes of the instrumental part. Just full on jamming between the drummer and the bass player and the guitar player. Just going off. So good. So good. Man, I really, really like that a lot. I like that song. I've, I've heard it before, you know, a few times over the years. Um, and it always caught my attention, you know. I just really like that, especially that beginning part. It was just unique. It was unique. It's still unique. Still unique. I like it. Man, that was good. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> once again, David Bowie does it for me. You know, it's just like never really got into him has an out al in his albums over the years here i am going to be 59 in a in april and uh you know just just missed out on the boat told the story many times a lot of my friends just said 
how David Bowie's their favorite singer and blah blah blah. And I just I didn't I never got there, but I totally see the appeal of David Bowie these days. You know, especially doing these reactions, really digging into some of his older music or not older but uh, deeper cuts is where I'm really surprised. And I don't I don't know why I'm surprised because his hits I all I like his hits. There's I can't even think of any songs that were hits that I don't like. I just never knew there was more. I don't know. I, I don't know what it was. But dang, I'm enjoying him right now. I am really enjoying discovering all these David Bowie songs. Of course, like I said, I've heard this one, but uh, not that familiar with it. But I've heard it. I was familiar with that opening. But to really sit and listen to it and just hear that live version and how the, the band was just going off. Just so jamming. That would have been so awesome to see, like I mentioned. I did say that. I'm feeling full of regret, not not just like packing a knapsack at 12 years old and running out the door to Nassau Coliseum or festival or whatever that was. What was it called? Uh, yeah, Nassau Coliseum, 1976. Man, I should have just should have just went there. Didn't have any money. Well, I had paper route money. Could have gone. I could have gone. I gotta stop making excuses. I could, if I wanted to, I could have done it. My mom always said, you can do anything you set your mind to, Todd. Good advice. <laughs>